I wanted to shoot this video to give you some more information about some of the things that I'm teaching around the country right now. Around the country, I'm teaching to doctors and to the public a seminar on weight loss resistance and hypothyroid. Uh, look, I've done a few videos already, if you haven't seen them, on the hypothyroid and what an epidemic it is, and a growing epidemic. Most people have normal blood work, and yet they have a thyroid condition. We're talking 80, 90% of the population, so please go watch that. But I wanted to teach a little more on weight loss resistance, which I really haven't yet, which is another massive epidemic in this country. The inability to lose weight despite what you eat and how much you exercise. That really is the definition. This is a modern day problem. Usually in the old days, you know, if you just ate better and exercised a little more, hey, you'd lose weight. However, today, we're not seeing that as being the case. Matter of fact, when I walk down the street and I see people who are severely overweight or obese, you know, most of people, I'm not gonna say you, but most people, especially doctors, by the way, would look at that person and say, my gosh, you know, they just need to eat the way I eat and exercise like me, and you know, that person must be a real glutton. I look at it completely opposite. I look at it as the fact that it's not their fault, I actually feel bad for them. Look, to understand weight loss in the 21st century, you have to understand hormones. Now, as you're gonna learn that there's a few factors of why so many Americans are in a state of hormone dysregulation, which is the real reason why people can't lose weight today. So I wanna get that message across to you. But before I do that, I always have to break down, and I even do this at the seminar, obviously in more detail, but there's a few myths that really most people have to you know, get out of their head because you know, if, if you don't get past those myths um, and they're still in your head, then you're really not gonna understand my message. And, and I know that this message I have for you is life-saving and changing. Okay, myth number one is that you can exercise your fat away. Now, listen, I love exercise, I do it myself. However, for weight loss, there is definitely a type of exercise that works better than others. And listen, weight exercise to me is just the cherry on the top. It is not the solution for weight loss. And today I think the media really spins it, the fact that we're just not exercising it, uh, enough. Look, I've got news for you. We exercise more in this country than any country in the world, and we're still the fattest. So exercise in itself is not the answer. Please go on my website, drpompa.com. You're probably there now, drpompa.com, drpompa.com. And you can actually watch a video on burst training. This high intensity training is really the, the better um, of the types of exercise to do. And also weightlifting resistive training. You know, that's what you wanna do for weight loss. Endurance training or staying in the the fat burning zone that we've been taught for so many years actually may have other benefits which is arguable however and I'm a big cyclist so I love the stuff however for weight loss definitely not good all right look myth number two maybe the biggest is that weight loss resistance are, is really um, or I should say calorie restrictive diets are really the answer um, to weight loss period so in other words do can we cut calories and lose weight? Well, the answer to that is actually yes. Ladies, you're, uh, you can lose between 10 and 15 pounds if you reduce your calories. Men, you're a little more blessed than that, 15, 20, maybe even 25. But the question is, is does it really work long term? And the answer is absolutely not. Matter of fact, if you've watched any of my other videos, please go back and watch the HCG diet video because that's a calorie restrictive diet where they're actually giving you hormones to keep you uh, in this you know, uh, weight loss longer than you could on a regular cal caloric restricted diet. So I don't have time to get into that, but please go watch that video, search it on YouTube, because it is a very dangerous diet. And in the long run, you not only gain the weight back, but it causes more hormone problems. But look, calorie restriction, what happens? You'll lose 10 pounds. Now to, get, to lo even lose one or two more pounds, you have to restrict your calories even more. But the problem is this, what did you actually lose in that first 10 pounds? Most of it, in most Americans, is muscle and not fat, which what that does is it starts to bring down your metabolism, or what we call a set point. And now, to lose that extra pound or two, you have to severely restrict calories to an unhealthy level, and then guess what? Even if you do manage to lose another pound or two, most of it's muscle again, which lowers your set point again. You get the point. You keep going lower and lower and lower until finally, hormonally, all of a sudden you have to, you want to break the diet because your body wants to survive. To understand weight loss in the 21st century, it's all about hormones, okay? So we're gonna learn a lot about that. One more myth we have to bust here before we go on to the lesson. 
The last myth is really important. Fat makes you fat. Look, if we're all honest, we believe that, don't we? Fat makes us fat. We've ran from it from the 60s. You know, and I could go into a whole seminar about why fat not only does not make you fat, but it's the opposite. Fat actually helps you lose weight. Now, there has to be a distinction of good fats and bad fats. Yes, but the problem with that is, is most people don't understand really what are the good fats and what are the bad fats. Because I'll make an argument that actually saturated fat and cholesterol, which, my goodness, don't eat those. They not only will make you fat, but they're also going to make you sick. Well, I'll make the argument that those are probably two of the fats that play a really important role in weight loss, believe it or not. So fat is a critical component to actually lose weight. As a matter of fact, fat is a critical component to actually regulate hormones, which is the real reason why people can't lose weight today. So fat does not make you fat. Here's the lesson, I want you to repeat it at home. Fat doesn't make you fat. It's the inability to burn fat that makes you fat. That, my friends, is a hormonal problem. Let's learn a lesson. Let's call this part two of why people can't lose weight, and this is absolutely the hormone connection. Uh, before I talk about hormones, though, you have to understand one thing about your cells. They can only use two things for energy, either sugar or fat. Look, most healthy Americans, or I shouldn't say most, but healthy Americans have the ability to be a fat burner and a sugar burner, fat burner and a sugar burner, and able to get that energy into the cell. However, most Americans do not have the ability to burn fat for energy. See, that's the hormone problem. They are stuck in sugar burning mode. So what you should be asking yourselves is this, how can I become a sugar or a fat, fat burner, Dr. Papa? Well, look, you know, let me answer it this way. You know, I'm always asked this question um, from type two diabetics. It says, Dr. Pamba, you know, why is my glucose level the highest in the morning that it is all day when I haven't eaten all night long, maybe for 10, 12, 13 hours? Well, the answer to that is you have, you've ate all night long. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, you cannibalized your muscle. You took your muscle and you actually broke it down into sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis. Remember when I talked about calorie restriction diets? I said that most people are just simply losing muscle. That's because they don't have the ability to take their fat and burn it for energy. Remember, your cells can only use two things, either sugar or fat. However, it can take muscle, protein, that's muscle, and break it down into sugar. And that's what happens to the diabetic all night long. See, what's really meant to happen is it takes tremendous amounts of energy through the night. And you take your fat, you burn it, you literally wake up in the morning and you're visibly leaner. That's what's supposed to happen. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen to most Americans because they're taking their muscle and they're actually breaking it down into sugar because of the inability hormonally to become a fat burner and use their fat for energy. That is a hormone problem. If you're writing this down at home, and you should be, I wanna teach you this hormone, the hormone leptin. Leptin is the hormone that tells your brain to burn its fat for energy. You have to understand the leptin story, and I think this will help. In about 1994, 1995, leptin was discovered, and they thought to themselves, man, where, you know, all we have to do is give obese and people who can't lose weight this hormone it's gonna tell their brain to burn all their fat for energy, and it actually worked in the mice. But what they found was, is when they started testing obese and severely overweight people and people who couldn't lose weight, they actually found that they had too much leptin. So there went their trillion dollar idea of giving people the hormone. Well, you know, here is actually why. You know, just like a type two diabetic where they actually have too much insulin, you can't give them insulin, the problem is it's insulin resistance. Their body can't, their cells cannot hear the hormone. And that's exactly what happens with this hormone leptin. The brain or the cells in the brain in the hypothalamus, they can't hear the hormone. So therefore, it's not getting the message. Giving them more of the hormone will not work at all. You know, so what is it? You should be asking yourself then, okay, why is that? How do I become a fat burner? How do I get my cells in my brain listening to this hormone? Because here's how it works. Let me just kind of draw you an illustration. If that's you, see how happy you are? Not so happy now, are you? Okay, as this person starts to gain fat cells, the fat cells actually is where the leptin's produced. So think about this, it actually works pretty clever. As you gain weight and you're making more fat cells, the fat cells make leptin, and they tell your brain, in particular, the hypothalamus is right in the center of your brain, says, hey, burn us for energy, and then it sends a signal down here, 
and it burns your fat for energy. Pretty nice system. Well, that is until the hypothalamus can't get the message. And that's what we're finding is in these people who can't lose weight, they have all this leptin, but it's not getting through to the hypothalamus. One more drawing, we're gonna take it down to the micro level, so bring out your electron microscopes, folks, and we're taking it down to the cell in the brain of the hypothalamus. Now, remember what the hypothalamus does. It tells you to stop eating, and that's what the leptin hormone does, and it also tells you to burn your fat for energy. So this hormone is the, the key to really understanding this whole process. This is what's happening at your cell. On every cell in your body, you have these receptors. Now, the one thing that I always teach is that hormone problems today, or really at all today, are not problems with hormones necessarily. They're problems with the receptor to the hormone. So this is exactly what's happening with a lot of um, other hormone conditions like thyroid, estrogen, testosterone. We can go down the list. But in this case, we're talking about the hormone leptin that has to communicate with the cell, and it does it through these little receptors. Now, the problem is this is that when these receptors become blunted, are you going to need more of the hormone or less of the hormone? Well, of course, you're going to need more of the hormone. So if your cells look like this, where you don't have as many of these receptors as this cell that has all these really good receptors, you're going to need more leptin. This is called leptin resistance, very similar to a type 2 diabetic. So what you should be asking yourself is, how does this occur? I'm going to give you three reasons and three things that you need to watch out for. Because if we can get your cells to look like this cell again, then guess what? You're going to become a fat burner. So let's write these down at home. Number one are bad fats. And we're going to talk about that in part three. We're not going to talk about it today, but we're going to talk about it part three. So stay tuned because bad fats, there is a lot of things. And I told I said earlier that most people don't understand really the difference between good fats and bad fats. So we're going to break down a lot of myths there. And remember I said earlier too, that really fat is the key to losing weight. So fat is also the key to fixing these receptors. So that's really going to be an important lesson. Number two, is of course increase in sugar but also a sugar that most of us aren't at least think about as a sugar and that's grains the overconsumption of grains especially genetically modified grains is really driving this problem of the uh, of the hormone receptor you know so that is going to be something that we have to teach you and lastly toxins so all three of these things come in and they make their way to this cell membrane where these hormone receptors are and they start to blunt these hormone receptors. So next time in part three, we're gonna talk about these and we're gonna get you to understand what you need to do to avoid them and what you need to do to become a fat burner. So see you in part three.